Here are the eight most commonly banned subclasses in D&D, and also why they're banned. Eloquence Bard. Yeah, this thing is busted. The Eloquence Bard is the most infuriating subclass for DMs to handle, and it's all online by level three. They have silver tongue, so any persuasion or deception check can never be lower than a 10. If you roll lower than a 10, it becomes a 10. With just a regular plus four in charisma and expertise in those two skills, your end result will never be lower than a 20 by level five. A nat one is a 20. Best or worst of all, persuasion and deception are incredible skills. Social engineering is ridiculously powerful. This can upend any DM's plans, end fights before they start, and generally subvert any negative consequences for the party's actions. I mean, when a commoner needs to beat at least a 20 on their insight check to tell if you're lying, you're gonna get away with a lot. This puts a lot of pressure on DMs. Do they railroad the party, insisting that no matter what what you roll, these guards cannot be persuaded. If the DM takes this route, they're basically removing the entire point of this subclass. You might as well not have a subclass anymore. Or does the DM let the bard steamroll every social encounter, hogging the spotlights because it's basically impossible not to hog the spotlights with this feature? Oh yeah, and they also have unsettling words, giving a negative modifier to your enemy's next saving throw as a bonus action. This makes suck or save spell disgustingly reliable. If you thought Dominate Person was strong before, wait till you have to beat a DC 18 wisdom save with a minus D10 modifier to your roll. Eloquence bards aren't only crazy powerful, they're powerful in a way that can lead to unfun games in some situations. As a result, they often get the ban hammer. Zealot Barbarian. Zealot Barbarians are banned for one very simple reason. They make death a non-issue. They can be resurrected by any resurrection spell for zero material cost. Normally, Revivify costs 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds, but on a Zealot Barbarian, it's free. In hyper-dangerous, lethal games where resources are scarce, Zealots are basically a cheat code that undoes any tension. They also have the honor of being functionally unkillable by level 14 with Rage Beyond Death. While raging, they do not fall unconscious when they hit zero hit points, and failing death saves cannot cause them to die. This means a level 14 Zealot can solo the Tarask, or a Kraken, or Vecna if they dodge his once per day dominate monster. Basically, if you don't have a way to end their rage and they can recover just one hit point before their rage ends, they are unstoppable. This also makes Zealots a little game-breaking in high-level gladiator-style one-shots, where you throw the party at a high-level monster for fun. Zealot is a decent subclass, but it is no way near as powerful as the others on this list. It's a great example of how a feature doesn't need to be broken to break or just not fit in certain types of games. So you want to play D&D &D with your friends, with your friends. But you don't got very much time and money to spend. Time to spend. Well, don't think twice about rolling dice. You'll be playing tonight. tonight. Just follow this little bit of advice. DDShorts.com. 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 Ready made adventure. Hundreds of pages of epic D&D &D stuff. D &D stuff. Maps and puzzles and rules to give your game a buff. Rules for crafting signature spells, hold note for putting your players through hell, epic feats and magic items, and of course much more as well at DDShorts.com! Yeah! Mega Discount Deal! Deal! Start playing now! DDShorts.com! Link below! No subscription needed! Play D&D today without stress or worries by heading over to dndshorts.com to pick up the DM's secret weapon. Grab the annual pack for over 600 pages of subclasses, new rule systems, race options, stunning maps, and ready-to-play adventures. Now with a 20% discount and with two free bonus adventures, it's everything you need to run epic games without worries or fuss. Perfect for beginner DMs, experts looking to kick their game up a notch, or players looking for awesome new options. Check it out, link below. Divination Wizard. Divination Wizards get arguably the most powerful feature in D&D. 
important. This breaks the game. I'm not exaggerating. It literally undoes the fundamental mechanics of Dungeons and Dragons. Portent lets you roll 2d20 anytime you finish a long rest. You record those results and anytime a creature you see makes an attack roll, ability check or saving throw, you can swap its result out for one of the results you got earlier. So if you wake up feeling fresh and roll a nat 20, you can swap out any of your allies' attacks for a guaranteed crit. Much more terrifyingly, if you roll a low number, you can force an enemy to fail a deadly saving throw against something like Banishment or Hold Monster. This removes luck from the equation. You are a god. You can point at someone, send them to the Shadow Realm, and there is nothing they can do to stop you. Interestingly, the feature also incentivizes players not to take initiative on adventures. Unless time is of the essence, Divination Wizards can just hang out, waiting until they get a great roll with Portent before going on an adventure. You need to convince the king to give you a ton of gold? Well, just hang out for a few days until you roll a nat 1 on your Portent to guarantee the success of your suggestion spell. The funny thing is, the rest of the Divination Wizard isn't all that interesting. They get to save a few spell slots on Divination Spells, which is okay, and their final feature is just another roll of Portent each day. This means means you can pick up most of the value of the Divination Wizard from just a two-level dip. Two levels for Portent is probably worth it, especially as you can pick up a bunch of great wizard spells along the way as well. Removing agency is very rarely fun in D&D. Normally, we talk about DMs removing player agency, but Divination Wizards have the, frankly, hilarious ability to actually railroad a DM. To bypass that, and considering there isn't an easy way to nerf Portent without making the entire subclass useless, they are just banned entirely. Twilight Cleric. A recurring theme in a lot of banned subclasses is that they give one player a ton of power very quickly. Twilight Clerics are a little different. They give everyone a ton of power quickly. At level one, you get Proficiency with heavy armor and martial weapons. 300 feet of dark vision. The ability to share that 300 feet of dark vision with your allies. Advantage on all initiative rolls. And all the S tier cleric cantrips and early game spells like healing word, bless, toll the dead, guiding bolt, and guidance. 300 feet of dark vision is insane for any ranged build. If it's dark, you can attack from 300 feet away while effectively giving your enemies the blinded condition. Even the freaking Demogorgon can't see 300 feet away in the dark. Being invisible to them means you can't even be targeted by a ton of dangerous spells and abilities. All your attacks have advantage and incoming attacks have disadvantage. But the real GOAT ability is your level 2 channel divinity. As an action, you radiate dim light in a 30 foot radius and all allies of your choice that end their turn in that sphere regain 1d6 plus your cleric level temporary hit points or end the charmed or frightened condition on themselves. This ability slaps so hard, it single-handedly makes all other healing obsolete. At level five, with a party of five, you're handing out 42 average temporary hit points every turn at no action cost. This turns the entire party into regenerating tanks. I've run ridiculously over-leveled monsters against teams backed up with a Twilight Cleric, and you simply cannot break through that passive healing. Twilight clerics are just really, really good. Are they broken? Well, the dark vision thing is definitely exploitable, and you get a ton of great features for just a level 1 multi-class dip. Couple that with passive regeneration that would make Wolverine jealous, and these guys often get the ban hammer. Hexblades. Hexblades are a famously powerful multi-class option. They have a first level feature that lets you use charisma, not dexterity or strength, as your attack and damage modifier for one weapon. Taking just one level of Hexblade lets Paladins dump strength, access a tasty bonus action with Hexblade's curse, and they can pick up a second level at any time to access those juicy Warlock invocations. The sad thing is that Hexblades are a really cool subclass in their own right, but because they are basically necessary for an optimized paladin and for a lot of optimized bards and sorcerers, they're only ever remembered as this broken multi-class option. To stop all charisma-based spell blades being the same, Hexblades are often banned as a multi-class, if not just banned outright. Shepherd Druid. Shepherd Druids are an interesting case because they're not banned because their abilities are busted, they're banned because the spell their abilities interact with 
are busted. Shepherds are all about summoning spells, like conjure animals, conjure woodland beings, etc. And summoning spells like those are a nightmare for DMs to handle, while also being some of the most powerful spells in the game. Conjure woodland beings can turn the entire party into giant flying apes at just level 7. And conjure animals can summon 8 freaking wolves to just tear enemies apart via action economy alone by only level 5. All those extra creatures to keep track of slow the game down brutally, and the Shepherd Druid features just make them even more of a nightmare to handle. Because these spells are often nerfed or just outright banned, the subclass that revolves around them ends up getting the ban hammer as well. Also, shout out to Moon Druids here, a class that is incredibly powerful between levels 2 and 4. As a result, they're often removed from very low-level games. Artificers. Yeah, some tables just ban all artificers. Some DMs just don't want to mesh futuristic tech like flamethrowers and battle bots in their high fantasy setting. Personally, I don't think this is correct. I think you could argue that all the dwarves, Celebrimbor, and even Sauron himself from Lord of the Rings are artificers, and they obviously work in a high fantasy setting. If you put the work in, you honestly can make any flavor fit any world. Still, for aesthetic reasons, some tables just cut them from their game altogether, as they do with Warforged and Auto Nodes. Chronergy Wizard. Ah yes, the most banned subclass of them all. Firstly, Time Wizards are sometimes banned on the spot because they are technically a setting exclusive wizard. They come from Wildmount. But aside from that, Chronergy Wizards get a ton of annoyingly powerful abilities. Firstly, they get their very own version of Silvery Barbs. Everyone's favorite spell! Except it doesn't cost a spell slot. Hooray! And they also get a 5 times a day suck or save effect to completely incapacitate an enemy. Again, at no spell slot cost. And neither of these features are the problematic ones. The crazy busted feature is at level 10. Arcane Abeyance. This lets Chronergy Wizard store a spell of 4th level or below in a bead for up to 1 hour. During that time, any creature can use an action to cast the spell stored within, treating themselves as the caster but using the wizard's spell save DC and attack modifier. This essentially lets Chronergy Wizards break the concentration rules. You can give your familiar the bead, have them cast Sickening Radiance, and immediately follow it up with a wall of force, locking your enemies in the spell. This is the microwave combo, and it kills almost any creature in the game that is smaller than gargantuan size. Just lock them in the sickening radiance for 10 minutes and see if they die from damage or exhaustion first. And this is only one option. The potential behind Arcane Abeyance is insane. It is honestly an incredibly exciting and fun ability, but sadly, it's just broken. Like Divination Wizards and Eloquence Bards, it's a feature that removes agency on behalf of the enemy. It simply puts too many creatures in a no-win situation with no risk to the player. Coupling that with the other powerful features means that despite being a fan favorite, Chronergy Wizards get the ban hammer. Now I gotta say that I respect any table to do whatever they want to have a good game, but honestly, I don't recommend banning subclasses. Some of these can definitely be problematic and totally steamroll over an inexperienced DM, but if players use them responsibly without actively trying to ruin the game, they're usually okay. Very strong, but with firm boundaries and lots of communication, nothing that a good table can't work their way through. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out all this awesome stuff on dndshorts.com, link in description. Uh, check out other videos, and yeah, see you later.